All right, in part three of this series, we're going to go over the process of meiosis. Now, meiosis is a really, really important form of cell division because it takes a diploid mother cell and it divides into haploid daughter cells. And these haploid cells are more than likely going to become the gametes. They're going to help create the next organism. Okay, so we're not going to go through all the detail of all the phases because you had that in the last chapter when you went over mitosis. So... I'm expecting you to remember the things that happen during prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So we're not going to go over those details here, but there are some things about meiosis that makes it real special, and that's what we're going to learn about now. All right? Meiosis is specifically known as reduction division. Okay? Uh, let's try a different color here. I don't want that one. There we go. There we go. Red. Okay? Now, what you're doing is you're reducing the chromosome number. So you're going from diploid to haploid, you're going to cut the number of chromosomes in half. And this is why it's called reduction division, reducing the number of chromosomes. Now, I want you to pay attention right here at number two. How do we go from diploid to haploid? We're going to replicate the DNA once, but we're going to divide twice. And it's that second division where that number gets cut in half. All right. Now, science got real creative on this one. Because we're doing two divisions, we're going to name each of those divisions a special name. So I want you to be really, really, really be careful and remember this one because it's really tough. The first division is called meiosis number one. Oh! Tricky, huh? Now, something really important happens in meiosis number one, and that's called crossing over. Now, crossing over, <clears throat> excuse me, crossing over is one of the ways that we greatly increase genetic variety. And remember, genetic variety is the raw material for evolution. That's going to come up here on a slide in just a little bit. Okay, the second division is called meiosis number two. Oh! And remember, this is when the reduction occurs. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this picture over here. Uh, in this organism, we're just going to say we only have two chromosomes. So basically, 2N equals 2. There's two chromosomes. You got one from mommy and you got one from daddy. So this red one is from mom and the green one's from dad. So we're going to go through DNA replication. Remember, we replicate once. So temporarily, we have four chromosomes. Uh, we're going to have crossing over and synapses. We're going to learn about what that does here in a little bit. In crossing over, basically, the parts of the chromosome are going to switch places. And so here we got division number one. So this area right here would be called meiosis number one. So we still have, I mean, we started with two chromosomes. We still have two chromosomes. So remember, in this case, N is going to equal one. So we're still at N equals two. And now we're going to go through what is called meiosis number two right down here. And you'll notice that all of these organ or all these cells down here are haploid. In other words, they only have one chromosome, one. One, one, and one. Now, you'll notice these two guys right in here. They're different, and that's because of crossing over. And so as we can see here, we've got one, two, three, four, four haploid daughter cells. And because of crossing over, they're all different. The, every one of these cells are different genetically, and that's really important for increasing the genetic variety. So let's look at crossing over in a little bit more detail. Now, remember, the coolest thing that happens during meiosis number one is the process of crossing over. When crossing over occurs, we're going to form, we're going to do a process called synapsis. And when synapsis occurs, your homologous chromosomes are going to pair up. And so the, the X shape, remember we have a replicated chromosome because we replicated once. The uh, replicated chromosome from dad is going to pair up with this homolog, which is the one that came from mom. And that's going to form a tetrad. <clears throat> the root word for tetrad equals four. So that tetra equals four. So think of the game at Tetris, the old video game. Uh, the biggest piece that you can rearrange has four blocks in it. All right, so what we have right here is a tetrad. And we have four chromatids. One, two, three, and four. So that forms 
your tetrad. Let me get that written in here. All right, so that's all that means. So they're just paired up. Now, what's going to happen is sometimes one chromosome is going to overlap the other. And when that happens, crossing over can occur. Because during crossing over, they're going to switch places. Now, the point where they cross over is called a chiasma. All right, That's just the point where they cross over. So this area right in here is a chiasma, and that area right in there was a chiasma. And so at the chiasma, that's the point where they're going to switch places. So you're going to notice that part of this maternal chromosome is going to end up on this. Did I say maternal? Let's try this again. Part of this maternal chromosome is going to end up over here on the paternal chromosome and vice versa. And so basically, if you want to think about what crossing over is, it's kind of like you've cut the deck and you just rotate it over. So it's just like that when you play cards. Crossing over is basically you're cutting the deck. All right, let's get rid of that. <clears throat> All right, so now remember, during meiosis number two, there's no, no replication at all. And when you divide the second time, that's when you reduce the number. And remember, when you're done, you're going to have four complete daughter cells. So let's look at this in terms of humans. And let's use green. All right, so humans have 46 chromosomes. 23 from dad, 23 from mom. All right, so we're going to go through the process of crossing over. So let's call this crossing over. And we're also going to have the process of DNA replication going on in here. I'll just call that DNA rep. And that's going to give you a cell that temporarily has 92 chromosomes because you got a copy of everyone from dad and you got a copy of everyone from mom. All right. So then we're going to go through meiosis number one. We're going to call that M1. And that's going to give us cells that essentially have 46 chromosomes. These cells here, remember, they're not exactly like this cell over here because of crossing over. So they, remember, these are not identical. And then we're going to go through meiosis number two. And it's during meiosis number two, and we're just going to call that M2. And that's when you're going to get your reduction because there was no DNA replication during in here. So every one of these cells are going to have 23 chromosomes, 23 chromosomes, 23, and 23. Now remember, out of these four haploid daughter cells, none, none of these are genetically identical. So it's not like you had in mitosis where all the cells were clones of each other. These are all going to be genetically different. And it's mainly because of this crossing over. We've cut the deck. And so not every single one of these are going to get the exact same genes. Okay? All right, we're going to stop this episode right here. I went through this real quick because I, I totally think that you should have understood what happens during prophase, metaphase, antiphase, telophase, and all those other parts of mitosis. And the same things are kind of happening in here. But I do want you to remember that during meiosis, you're going to do DNA replication once, one times, but you're going to divide two times. And this is why you get this reduction division. You're going to cut your chromosomes from a diploid all the way to haploid. And the purpose of that is so that you can make those gametes so that you can do sexual reproduction. Okay? Now, in your textbook, I think it's on page 325, somewhere in that ballpark, there's going to be more detailed pictures than what I drew. You want to make sure that you look at those. Okay? Because some of those pictures will show up on tests and quizzes. So I'm going to expect that you know how to go back to your book and read those pictures. Okay? So, until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.